Let's start with a little experiment. One, two, three, one, two, three. So we, we make now every third person here in the room stand up. We make it with row. So one, two, three, first, uh, th third row, stand up. One, two, three, th stand up. So one, two, three, please, every third row, please stand up. Also here, stand up. You, you have to move, move. One, two, three, stand up, stand up. Please, also here, stand up. You have to stand up. And then the people that are already standing up, this is great, please. Look around and let this sink for a moment. Because what you see now is how frequent allergies are. All the people standing up here are the people with allergies. So now you can relax and listen to how allergy is connected with planetary health. You can sit down. So, to start with, three key facts for allergies. First of all, allergy is common. Indeed, in Germany we have 25 million people that are allergic. And five million of those are beyond 18 years, meaning the future in Germany is allergic. Second, allergy is annoying, because people that are suffering from allergic diseases, they cannot concentrate. When the nose is running, when the eyes are itching, when they are breathless. And third, and this is the good news, Allergy is treatable, preventable, and preventable by inducing tolerance, by educating the immune system, and by planetary health. So by saving the environment, we can prevent allergies. Seems strange to you? I will ex explain it to you. So let's start with what is an allergy? So for those of you who are allergic, they could tell this as well, but I will take this over today. So allergy can be asthma. It can be conjunctivitis. It can be rhinitis. It can be even oesophagitis. And it can be also anaphylaxis. Symptoms are as diverse. So symptoms can be breathlessness. Itchy eyes, itchy nose, running nose, running eyes, and shock. From the point of view of the immune system, allergy is a loss of tolerance towards environmental factors. So at the end, it's nothing else than a mistake, a mistake of the immune system. So what induces allergies? So Everything in the environment can induce allergies. In, pr in principle, really everything. The most common inducers are pollen from birch or grasses, mites in the house dust, or food, or drugs. All this can induce allergies. Now, now the question is, why are allergies so common. So let me tell you that in principle, 50 years ago, allergy was a rare disease. And with urbanization, with modernization, with globalization, allergy evolved. And today, it's a major threat. We have in Europe 200 million people suffering from allergic disease. And with urbanization, with modernization, there were coming so many factors that are propagating allergic disease. I will be, bring you three main facts. First of all, the increase of pollutants. So pollutants, you know, that we have from incomplete combustion from, from industry. So we have all these pollutants like diesel suit particles. We have ultra-fine particles, but we have also a lot of chemicals. So did you know 
that since um, the middle of the last century, we have 350,000 new chemicals that came into our daily life. Detergents, detergents in your toothpaste, in your dishwasher. And all these pollutants, what they are doing is, they are making our skin leaky. Leaky skin means that only through this leaky skin and leaky mucosa, these factors that are inducing allergies, pollen, mites, as I told you, they can now penetrate the skin and they're getting into contact with the immune system. And then this mistake starts. The immune system misunderstands this. The immune system thinks, okay, oh, pollen, this is harmful. It's not. You, normally, we, we, we have a tolerogenic immune response. Tolerance, active tolerance is what we normally have towards these environmental factors. So with the increment of pollutants, we have this loss of barrier function. At the same time, something happens with our environment, with our nature. The nature is becoming more and more allergenic for us. So we have, for example, due to climate change, we have more pollen per day. We have even no single day without pollen during the, the, the year. And the pollen, they are, they are becoming more aggressive because they are producing more of these substances that are inducing allergic immune responses. And the fourth thing is that we have also new pollen, invasive species that are coming to us, to Germany, to Europe, like ambrosia, and they are inducing strong asthmatic reactions. And then we have also interesting phenomena like thunderstorm asthma. Did you ever hear about thunderstorm asthma? Okay, so I will explain it. So thunderstorm asthma simply is asthma when there's thunderstorm. What happens is that the pollen are exploding and landing in deeper areas of the lung and then the lung has a strong asthma and you can even die from this. And then we have also totally new allergies. So when you are bitten by a tick, you can develop a red meat allergy. The problem is with this red meat allergy is that, yeah, people can, can die from a piece of red, milk, uh, red meat. They can die of a piece of red meat by anaphylaxis, shock. So these are new allergies that are increasing with the decrease of climate change. So when I'm telling this to you, I know your, your question is, okay, when this is all this, this, this severe, so why are not all allergic? Actually, we do not know. But we are, we are on this. This is why I, I mutated from a dermatologist to an environmental health scientist. And the good news is that normally we are tolerating nature and there are some protective factors in nature. For example, biodiversity, microbial diversity in our environment, in our surrounding, protects us from the development of allergic disease. So we know, for example, that Traditional farming is protecting from the development of allergic disease. So who of you lives with a, with a cow under one roof? No one? This is a problem. Because we know when you live with a cow under one roof, you are protected from allergies. And we, we also know um, that there, there are other protective factors. It's, it's diversity, not only in the, in the big surrounding, but also on our skin. The microbial diversity on your skin, in your gut, is decreasing when you are developing allergic disease. So this loss of biodiversity 
essential. Another good example is dogs. Dogs are, are making our macro environment more biodiverse. So two dogs are better than one dog. This is what studies sh uh, show. Don't tell this to my don't tell this to my son because always he wants always a dog. So tell, don't tell him. So, but it's all about this biodiversity we are losing with climate change. We are losing these protective factors. So we have more pollutants, more these allergenic factors from danger, and less of these protective factors. So we as medical doctors and environmental health scientists, we are leveraging this knowledge in order to treat patients and to, to, yeah, to keep them also healthy. So now I will put on my white coat as medical doctor and give you some advice what you can do in order to get cured and also how you can avoid to get allergic. Don't worry, no extra charge for this. Okay, first of all, when you are allergic, go to the doctor. <laughs> you are laughing. But it, it's, it's not that simple. We, we did a study in Augsburg and, and um, over 300 people we asked and the message we got from the patients is that the patients are trivializing their disease, especially men. So, go to the doctor. Second, when you are pregnant, this is now only for the females, so when you are pregnant, please eat diverse, eat a plant-based diet, eat a lot of fibers in order to get your microbiome on the skin in your gut biodiverse. When, do not smoke, this is also important. Do not smoke while you are pregnant. Smoking in general is not good. Then when your child is born, when you can, breastfeed it for three months. And then try to introduce as diverse food as you can. The more diverse the food is in the first and second year of life, the better it is. Second, uh, cream your child. Put a lot of cream to repair the barrier of, of the skin of, the, of, the, of, your, of your child. And all this can help to prevent allergic diseases. So indeed, you see that Planetary health is closely connected to human health. And when we protect our planet, we can also protect our hearts. Means that we really have to do everything, really everything, to have a healthy environment for healthy people. So I call on you, I call on us, to protect the health of our planet for the health of our children and for our livelihood on this beautiful planet. Thank you.